whoa, I just finished drinking my water. It's so hot and I drink all this water. Remember the bottle, Kids Connection? Yes, it was nice and cold. Oh, I love water. Welcome to Kids Connection, kids. My name is Audrey Zorik, director of Kids Connection here at Vallejo Drive Church, a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God through activities, fun songs, and Bible stories. Today we're going to be singing a song, I Have a Friend in Jesus Who Loves Me. Remember the song we sang right here, Yo Tengo Un Amigo Que Me Ama? Me Ama, Me Ama? We're going to be singing that in just a little bit. But right now, I want to welcome everyone to Kids Connection. If this is your first time, I want to welcome you and let you know that every Sabbath, we have a new program right here at Kids Connection. So come back, check out new programs that we have fun activities and different stories every Saturday. And if this is, if you are regular, we want to welcome you back. It's so good to have you guys here. Welcome back, kids. All right. So on a hot summer day like today, what better than drinking water, right? Well, did you guys know that in the Bible it says that God is the living water? And without this water that we drink, we will die. And the same way that without Jesus, we cannot survive. That's right. That's say it says that on the Bible. So I hope you guys remember that that Jesus is the living water, the one that that gives us life and eternal life. Well, we're gonna have so much fun together today. Like always, I'm, I have to share something with you that is happening this month in the month of October. Not only here at Vallejo Drive, but all over the place. And I'll share that with you guys in just a little bit. But right now, welcome, boys and girls. I wish you were here with me. Let's go ahead and stand up, get ready to sing our song of the day, Yo Tengo Un Amigo Que Me Ama. That was a good song, wasn't it? I invite you guys to come back during the week. Scroll all the way down to the bottom of our website, graceandconditional.com forward slash Kids Connection and sing the song of the day throughout the week because this is going to remind us about our theme for today, okay? Now I'm gonna invite you to bow your heads, close your eyes so we can talk to Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you because you love us. Thank you for this Kids Connection program. Thank you because you are with us and we ask, we invite you to come in, in our lives, in our hearts, and accept our worship at this time. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so now that we sang our song of the day, we pray together, let's get our program started. And right now, I'm, well, this is a new month, so it's October last month our offerings were going to one part of the world 
now we start a new the last quarter the last three months of the of the year our offerings are going to a different part of the world and I, we're gonna share this special place with you now it's a place where it's one of the places that has most people in the world in one single country do you know where that is it's India we're gonna be talking about India today and let's watch and see how the message of God the love of God is being shared with all the people in India let's watch our missionary story today Jesus would have died for just one person of the 1.3 billion who live in India, Bhutan, Nepal, and the Maldives. That's how much he loves the people here in the Southern Asia Division of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. The work of the Adventist Church began in Southern Asia in India in 1893. Five coal porters, two from America, and a family of three from New Zealand arrived to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. The next year brought another missionary, Georgia Burris, the mission board of the Seventh-day Adventist Church paid Georgia's passage from the United States to India. Once there, she was responsible for her own living expenses. But God provided in miraculous ways. Later, she married a fellow missionary, and together they ministered in India for 40 years. From these humble beginnings, the Adventist Church in Southern Asia has grown to 1.6 million members. We praise God for this growth. But the vast majority of people in this region have not yet heard the good news about Jesus. Less than 1% of the population are Adventist. The Maldives, a country of 392,000 people, has no Adventist work. More than 800 languages are spoken in Nepal, Bhutan, and India. We have materials in only a handful of those languages. And yet church members, such as global mission pioneers, are sharing the love of Jesus in communities throughout this vast territory. Urban centers of influence have been established in cities, and thousands are being helped through schools and medical institutions. Sheer Memorial Hospital has been treating the sick in Nepal since 1960, and there are 11 more Adventist hospitals that offer holistic medical care in India. Thousands receive a holistic education at 144 Adventist secondary schools and nine institutions of higher education across India, including Spicer Adventist University. Hope Channel India broadcasts in nine languages, sharing stories of encouragement and inspiration to people such as Rajesh. Overwhelmed with financial difficulties in his family, Rajesh just couldn't concentrate at work. He lost his job and became depressed. One day, he came across Hope Channel India's prayer line and asked for prayer. This was the first step in getting to know Jesus and finding hope for his family. He now has a new job to provide for his family. Please continue to pray for the people of India, Bhutan, Nepal, and the Maldives. And pray for the church. With limited resources and in the face of many challenges, it seeks to remain faithful to God's call. Thank you for your mission offerings which fuel mission in the Southern Asia Division and around the world. One percent of people that know Jesus? That's incredible! We need to do something. We need to contribute with our offerings and let people know that God is love. God loves them. And since we can't go there, our offerings can help programs like the Hope Channel to share Jesus with the people in their own language, the way that they understand. So ask mom and dad to donate to the missionaries, clicking on the link on our website and donate to the missionaries. Don't forget that, okay? Also brand new I want to share with you guys is that we have a way that you can donate to Kids Connection. Yes, this is a ministry that requires funds, requires money, because we have to pay for certain things and we have to get certain materials. So if you wish that to help our program, you can go to the link above 
click on that and choose Kids Connection, and you can ask mom and dad to donate to our program as well, okay? But it's always appreciated when you pray for our service, when you pray for our worship, when you pray for this program. Your prayers are also very important. Thank you so much for joining us. All right, kids. Today, this month, as I said, that I was going to share something with you. Guess what we celebrate in the month of October. October is the month that we recognize our pastors. It is Pastor Appreciation Month. So here's something. Here's a challenge I want to present to you. I'm going to invite everyone who's watching this program right now. Right now, you're listening and you're watching. I'm going to invite you to do something special for our pastors. Here at Vallejo Drive Church, we have four pastors. We have Pastor James Kyle. We have Pastor Linda Bishwash. We have Pastor Ben Guerrero. And we have Pastor Lauren Lim. Do you guys remember the pastors from our church? When you watch the service with mom and dad on our website, do you remember seeing them participating as you're going to see them today? Yes? Okay. So here's my challenge to you. Let's do something special for the pastors this month. It You can start today, okay? Or you can start tomorrow. You can make this as a family project. But I'm going to invite everyone to do something for our pastors. Either you record a message and you send it to us, a message to the pastors saying, something to Pastor James, Pastor Ben, Pastor Linda, or Pastor Lauren, or all of them, or I'm going to invite you guys to write a note, m m draw a card, um, say how much you appreciate them, say how much you miss them, say something special that you think is special for our pastors. And I'm going to ask you to send those posters to the church, those cards, those notes, send it to the church. The address is 300 Vallejo Drive, Glendale, California, 91206. It's the address to the church. I'm going to collect all those posts, those postcards, those cards, those letters, those notes, those pictures, those drawings, whatever you guys send to the church, I'm going to collect that and we are going to give it to the pastors at uh, sometime before the end of the month because this is Pastor Appreciation Month. Remember, the month of October, okay? So, deal, I'm going to remind you guys again, but start working on something very special and share with the pastors how much we appreciate them as pastors as they continue to do the ministry here for our church. Deal? Excellent. I look forward to receiving. And if you want to record a little video, send it to me. Send it to the email address, vdkidsconnection at gmail.com. And I'll make sure that we'll put something, a nice video together to the pastors as well. Okay? Excellent. If you have any questions, just have mom and dad call me uh, or send me an email. And I'll be happy to work and coordinate that with them. All right. Now, let me ask you something. Who is your best friend? Who's your best friend? Do you have mom or dad as your best friend? Do you have one of your siblings as your best friend? Or do you have someone from school that is your, be that is your best friend? Or do you have a neighbor that is your best friend? Who is your best friend? What do you do with your best friend? Do you get to see your best friend as often as you wish? Now with everything that is going on, do you still see your best friend? Maybe you talk to your best friend a lot more on the phone than you used to. Maybe because you, your best friend, you can't see your best friend or you can't play with your best friend. How are you keeping up with your best friend? What ways do you have to communicate with your best friend? When you guys work together, 
how did you play and how much fun did you have together? I'm going to share something with you now, a short story, okay, about two best friends. They were the same age and they grew up together. They were toddlers, they were babies, and they grew up together as they were... Uh, they lived nearby. They weren't neighbors, neighbors, next door neighbors, but they lived nearby. So their moms were always getting together and they always went to the park together and they went to church together. When they grew up, they started going to the same school together and they were playing together. They went to the same classroom together. They were inseparable. They were like this, everything, everything together every day because it was during the week, school. On Sabbath, they went to school, to church together. And on Sunday, they went to the park together. So it was like every single day of the week doing something fun together. Do you have a best friend that you do that? Hmm, no. Uh, I didn't have a best friend that I could do that. I had some friends, but not like every single day. Well, what happened is that one day, when they were both almost in high school, one of the friends, their dad got a promotion and went to work at a different city far away. They were so worried, they were so concerned, oh no, what are we going to do now? We can't do all the things that we used to do together. We were like brothers and sisters. What are we going to do? Dad moved away. They were very sad. One family was living at a many, many, many hours a distance. And they kept the communication by phone. They emailed each other. They FaceTime each other. They play games on Zoom together and despite the distance and how far they were they still kept the communication that they had they shared their secrets they shared their problems they laughed together they cried together one day when they were going to college they decided that they want they wanted to go to the same college and when they met back at college they were again inseparable just like when they were kids nothing had changed everything was the same let me ask you something why do you think that they were back where they were in the beginning? Why do you think that when they met again, they were still best friends? Just like when they were back in school and when they were kids. Why do you think? Well, if you guessed that it was because they kept the connection and the relationship by phone, by Zoom, by, by FaceTime, by emails, you are absolutely correct. Because they kept their relationship and their friendship going, they shared, their, they shared all their secrets and they continued the communication with each other, they were able to keep their friendship alive. Okay, but if it wasn't for that, if they had never spoken again after one of the friends moved away, and if they have never seen each other or, or uh, uh, written emails to each other to share what was happening, if they had not kept contact with each other, that friendship would have disappeared in order for us to keep a friendship going we have to do things together we have to play go places 
share secrets, tell stories, laugh together, go eat together, go visit each other's friend, each other's houses. And that's how we keep the friendship alive. I have friends nowadays that when we when I was a kid, your age, we used to go to school. And now I'm still friends with them because we have cell phones and because we message each other all the time. We keep the relationship, the friendship alive. Friends, there's someone who is my friend. There's someone who's my friend because he loves me. And this someone is also your friend because he loves you. I'm talking about Jesus. Jesus is our friend. Jesus wants us to share things with him. He wants us to tell him secrets. He wants us to tell him our problems, our happiness, our joy. He wants us to laugh together and cry together. But in order for us to keep, for you and for me, to keep this friendship going, we need to have that communication. We need to communicate with Jesus and we need to share things with Jesus and we need to listen and we need to read about Jesus. That's how we keep that friendship alive. In today's story, we are going to hear about someone who was a very, very good friend of Jesus, of God. We're going to hear what he did and how, why he was a best friend of God. And just like on our song of today, I have a friend who loves me. He had a friend who loved him all the time. Stick around. After the song, your teacher is going to share the story with you of who this friend was and what he did. Right now, I'm going to invite you to stand up and sing our song of the day one more time. I have a friend who loves me. Let's close our program with a prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you so much because you love us, because you are our friend. And thank you because we can be your friend too. I ask and I pray for all the boys and girls. May they always have a place in their hearts for your friendship 
so they can be friends with you. Bless each one of them. Protect them as we continue now and listen to the story of the Bible. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us in an, on another Kids Connection program. I wish you got, I, I wish you you have a nice cool day. Don't forget to drink a lot of water. I love you guys so much. I miss you. Stick around for your teachers program until next week on another Kids Connection program. Bye-bye. Bye. Hi guys. Today for Sabbath school, I'm going to play a fun game with you where I'm going to ask you a question about an animal and you have to try and guess the answer. And these questions are from Kids National Geographic. Uh, so, first question. What is the only mammal that can fly? Is it a flamingo, a bat, or a penguin? It's a bat! That was the correct answer. Okay, so, which animal can still sting when dead? Is it a jellyfish, a wasp, or a snake? It's a jellyfish. Okay, next question. Which insect has more muscles than a human? Is it a caterpillar, an ant, or a butterfly? It's a caterpillar, because it has to move all those legs. Which animal can eat more than 30,000 insects a day? Is it a spider, a giant anteater, or a koala? It's a giant anteater. Which insect can be trained to detect explosives? Is it an ant, a cockroach, or a honeybee? It's a honeybee. I don't know why. Which bird is the only bird who can fly backwards? Is it a duck, a hummingbird, or a chicken? It's a hummingbird. Which bird cannot move its eyeballs? A parrot, an owl, or a raven? It's an owl. It moves its head to see around. Next question. What do you call an animal that is part bison and part cow? Is it a beefalo or a mistake? It's a beefalo. Those are really real for some reason. Which animal is called old man for a nickname? Is it a kangaroo, a gorilla, or a dog? It's a kangaroo for some reason. Which animal poop can be made into paper? Which animal poop can be made into paper? Is it a cat, an elephant, or a panda? It's a panda for some reason. Okay, so these are now going to be Bible facts from the Bible. Who is the oldest man to live on earth? Was it Adam, Methuselah, or Noah? It was Methuselah. How many people were taken straight to heaven without dying? It was um, how many? One, two, or three? It's two. It was two people, but who? It was Enoch and Elijah. Thanks for joining me. See you next time. Bye. Hey guys, happy Sabbath. Next few weeks, we're going to be talking about people in the Bible who had integrity. Do you know what it means to have integrity? 
It means to always do what is right in all situations. Honest, trustworthy. Today, we're gonna to be talking about Enoch, a person of integrity. Dylan told us that Enoch was one of the people from the Bible who was just taken from this earth. So God found Enoch to be a man of great integrity. So let's talk about who Enoch was. Enoch was Adam's great, 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 great grandson. And if I did the math right, Adam was still alive to see Enoch born. So back then in those days, people lived to be almost 1,000 years old. So like 900 years old was the average age back when the earth was still pretty new. So Enoch was during the time when the earth was still pretty new. It wasn't until around the time of the flood when God decided to shorten people's lives. So I'm wearing a shirt today that says, believe there is good in the world. And then from those words, you can make, be the good. There's only two people in the Bible who went to heaven without dying. There will be a lot of people who have died that will be in heaven. And I thank God for giving us eternal life through his death. But we have to be the good in the world to show others who God truly is. So Enoch lived a life pleasing to God. We don't know a lot of details about Enoch's life. We just know that he walked with God. That means you went in God's way. Do you guys walk with God too? We know that Noah walked with God. And the Bible uses that term to show us that they followed God's love and they loved. So Enoch was 65 years old when he had his baby Methuselah. And Methuselah was the man who lived to be 969 years old, the, man, the oldest man to live on earth. Enoch was taken, so he's much older, but he didn't die on earth. When he was 365 years old, God took him. In the story of Elijah, when Elijah was taken to heaven, he went up in this huge like chariot of fire where a lot of people could witness that. But Enoch went a little more subtly. There was no big chariot of fire. He was just taken. So Enoch was Noah's great grandfather. By the time Noah came around, the world was very much different. It became much more evil than it had been during when Enoch was born. So let's read what the Bible says about Enoch. Who was this guy? So in Genesis chapter 5, starting from verse 21, it tells us about Enoch. It says, And Enoch lived 65 years old and had a son, Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he had Methuselah for 300 years. And he had more sons and daughters during that time. All the days of Enoch were 365 years, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. So he just stopped existing on earth. God took him. He was that pleasing to the Lord. Now let's see what it says about Enoch in Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him for before his translation, he had his testimony that he pleased God. He was known in his community as a person who pleased God. Our prayer is that our church is known in our community by others who don't attend it, but by the city of Glendale, that we're a church who pleases God by serving others. So the important thing to learn about Enoch's life was he spent time with God. If you hang out with friends who spend time with God, 
they'll have more integrity than those who don't spend much time with God. Enoch made choices that pleased God, and we want to make the best choices too. So how can we walk with God when we can't see him, like when we actually literally walk with other people? Thankfully, we have the Bible to tell us how to do that. So turn with me to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 2. It says, And walk in love as Christ has loved us and has given himself for us. Let's go to Colossians. Colossians 1.10 says that you walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. So it's telling, it's telling us the more we study our Bible and become more knowledgeable and familiar with God, we can be more fruitful, meaning as we just live, we can show others who Christ is. 1 Thessalonians 2.12 that you would walk worthy of God, who has called you unto his kingdom and glory. Live good lives for God. I know we've talked about this before. It is God who calls you into his glorious kingdom, and he wants us to be happy. Wow, let's go back to Colossians. Colossians 2, 6. And you have therefore received Jesus Christ the Lord, so walk with him. We have received God. We have received his sacrifice to save us. So why wouldn't we walk with him? Colossians 4, 5. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without. Be wise in the way you act. Be wise in the way you act with people who aren't believers so you can reveal who Christ is. Let's go to 1 John 1, 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from sin. God is the light. We should live in the light too. If we live in the light, we share fellowship with each other, and we can all be better people for God and for each other. So if we find ourselves doing the wrong thing, we can always ask Jesus to forgive us and help us to find the way. We're gonna make binoculars today so we can look for integrity in others and in ourselves. So keep these with you as we study other people with, who had integrity in the Bible. So what you're gonna need is two toilet paper rolls and a stapler to staple these guys together. We'll staple one side, then the other side. And then you're going to need to have a hole punch to make a hole on the side of one, not too close to the top because you want to be able to slip a string through. And if it's too close to the top, it will rip. So we'll do a little bit down. See the hole down there? We'll do it on the other side. And then you're gonna need a piece of string. I have some yarn here. Cut a piece off that will fit around your neck. So this is pretty good. And then I will slip my string through the hole and make a knot. The easiest way to do this would be to just bring it through and then make, tie a knot on the outside. And then you're gonna do that with the other side. So the other side is going to have another knot. Go ahead and decorate it with stickers or designs or whatever you'd like. Here we have it, we got binoculars. And so we're going to look within ourselves for integrity. Our application verse is found in Proverbs 20, 11. 
Even a child is known by his or her behavior, whether the work be pure and whether it is right. So let's be people of integrity. If we continue to do the right things over and over again, people will know that we belong to God. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, please help us to have more integrity, more making the right choices to do what is right. And if we make a mistake, please help us to see our mistakes, ask for forgiveness, and do better next time, continuing to walk with you. And if we go the wrong way, that we know you'll be there to bring us back. And please bless these beautiful children and their families throughout this week. And please help us to continue to be safe from the coronavirus and help those who are sick to heal. And thank you for giving us your Sabbath day to celebrate our eternal life. Thank you for loving us so much. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, guys, you go out there and be the good. Kids, do not touch the cake, okay? Okay. Did you touch the cake? No. Good. You deserve a sticker. Wait, Dylan, I asked for a cartoon on integrity.